Hello again, my name is Gabe Zona. This is the 14th of February, 2019. I just posted a video, and in that video I talked about uh, ex-police officer Jason Van Dyke. And I had said that uh, he should never have been charged for the murder of La Quinn McDonald. I did a video on this one particular shooting when it took place in Mesa, Arizona. I'm going to attach the link. Now, I want you to take a look at that. Now, the title of the video that I'm going to put that in is Absolute Cold-Blooded Murder by Mesa Cops. Now, how many times have we seen police arresting anyone that's well, a suspect in any kind of crime. What's the first thing that they do? Well, they say, don't move. Put your hands behind your back. And then what do they do? They handcuff them. How many times do you think you've seen that kind of scene unfold throughout your lifetime? I've probably seen it hundreds of thousands of times on television, in movies, that's what they're trained to do. They're trained to make certain a person isn't armed, put their hands behind their back, and handcuff them. Now, what happened in this particular hallway in a hotel room in Mesa, Arizona? Someone reported someone holding a gun out the window and a number of police arrived, four or five. The two occupants in the room were ordered out of the room. And you can hear the sergeant, he needs to be removed from the police force. He was absolutely power tripping and he was terrifying both of those individuals by yelling the orders that he was yelling at them. And he told them, do you understand the orders? If you move, it might result in your death. Now, all he had to do was do what we've seen them do thousands of times. Don't move, put your arms behind your back and put the handcuffs on them. What did he do? He made them crawl on their bellies. No reason for that. Other than, like I said, this guy has got some mental issues. Not as many mental issues as the guy holding the AR-15. What ended up happening, as you'll see in the video, the man reached back to pull up his pants and that sick cop unloaded his AR-15 by putting three or four rounds into the crawling man who was unarmed. Well, the officer that did that was fired. The sergeant that gave those ridiculous orders, I believe he's still on the police force. He should have been held accountable as an accessory to cold-blooded murder, because that's what it was. It was cold-blooded murder. And what proves that is what's inscribed on that officer's AR-15. There's a flap that opens as bullets are ejected. You know what was inscribed on that flap? If you see this, you're fucked. Now you tell me that that officer that had that AR-15 that had that inscription inscribed on that flap doesn't have mental issues. At the same time, in Chicago, an officer that's doing his job gets sent to prison 
for 81 months. And the district attorney is now trying to change that to resentence him to 18 years. Folks, this is out of control. I also did a video a number of years ago about two Orange County sheriffs. They put 18 or 28 or whatever it was, they emptied both of their guns and each gun had I think 15 rounds in it. They hit her I think 18 times. She had a little pocket knife, 17 year old girl. They were exonerated when they brought in their instructor who said that they're trained to empty their guns once they engage. What ended up happening a number of years later, Huntington Beach, California paid the families millions of dollars for the murder of their daughter. But those two cops, they were never charged with murder. Yet you got this case in Chicago. Absolutely insane. I'm going to try to get a hold of the attorney, the Jennifer Blagg, B-L-A-G-G. -G. I'm going to be calling there as soon as their offices open up, which is probably another hour. I'll let you guys and gals know what I come up with. Take a look at this clip. Tell me this isn't cold-blooded murder, and tell me that that sergeant barking those orders shouldn't be charged as an accessory. And he wasn't. Is that justice? I don't think so. Do you?